Oh my god, what a time to be alive right now. You know, I never thought I would make it this far a lot faster than I did in the past 20 plus years of studying Japanese. Domo mina san, shinai naru rinjin sho rokuji desu. Yoroshiku onegai shimasu. Now, today I just want to talk about a very special occasion on the day of this recording, and that is. comprehensive input. So, before we get to that, I want to talk about my little history of getting into Japanese as a language. Now, I've been falling in love with this culture ever since I was a kid, like around four or five years old. For me, and this is just to the best of my memory, it all started with a karate exhibition that my mom and my older brother also saw when I was at New York. Unfortunately, the idea of us, of her two boys training in martial arts, seemed to be a bad idea, but that didn't stop us from trying. Now, did it? Well, no. Point is, we learned martial arts. But by the time I was nine, I got into anime. My first series was Yoroi Dan Samurai Troopers, which a lot of us Americans know as Roman Warriors. It was a great Saturday morning cartoon show. Then we saw Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball, and we saw a lot of anime movies that aired on the Sci Fi Channel and on Stars later on. And as time went on, we saw more anime prop up, including Toonami having a lot of anime, such as Macross, re airings of Dragon Ball, complete with new episodes, re airings of Sailor Moon, also with new episodes, never before seen in the US, and more and more and more anime kept showing up. But then, like, into my young teenage years, we had cable. I mean, of course, we had cable even before then. But, point was, there was this indie film channel that showed subtitled anime, and I couldn't help but gush. Now, the idea of Japanese being listened to was nothing new. I heard the language in full when I was like around 11 years old, like every morning before I would walk to school. Yes, there's a school that is literally just a few seconds away from me. I can just walk there if I wanted to. But I'm too old now, and the idea of me going in there is kind of weird and creepy. So I digress. Let's move on. Anyways, I would always listen to a lot of the Japanese broadcasts that aired that morning before walking to school. And as time went forward, and then when I got to 8th grade, I felt that it was time for me to study Japanese. But unfortunately, every school I went to, even up to high school and even college, there was not a single adequate Japanese class that I could study in at all. So, the next best thing was going to a media center at the age of 12, going on 13, and getting a book that taught me multiple languages. But it was all fundamentals for one, and two, it was all in Romaji, and three, I didn't know how to pronounce at the time, and it took me a while, but I got used to it. And I used a lot of Japanese textbooks and things like that, all of which using Romaji more so than the written language, and that really fucked me up over the years, pardon my French, like it really messed me up until like around later on t that I decided, hey, you know what? I should do hiragana and katakana. So I took care of that by my college years. And even during that time, I was kind of immersing in Japanese through listening to a lot of Japanese anime that I got on DVD with subtitles and sometimes without, including Dragon Ball movies, of course, because I always had fun with those. <laughs> But there was a lot of disappointment from the community. Now, not everybody who was learning Japanese like me were bad, but some of them that I ran into were very discouraging, telling me that what you're doing is stupid. You should only learn with textbooks, and only with textbooks you'll get better. And that turned out to be a fucking slap on the face. So, but yeah, before I continue, just know there's going to be a lot of adult language in this session as opposed to earlier because like this is coming straight from the heart but moving forward i couldn't help but realize how discouraging it was just to be told that you can only learn japanese through textbooks through romaji and things like that now they did tell me that there are other ways of learning but even then i was always told to use romaji and 
that's very disappointing. But over time, I got kind of good with hiragana and katakana, which are essentially parts of the Japanese alphabet, the more simplified stuff. But then I wanted to do kanji, but my insanity said, hey, get more books, get more textbooks from Barnes and Noble. That'll set you straight. Except when it came time to speak Japanese with any random native that showed up, the results were awkward and my confidence would only last for a few seconds, especially after saying goodbye to some of the travelers who came to America. At the end of the day, it was like really pretty damn disheartening just to realize that uh, every time I would speak Japanese to people, it would come off as a little bit like, oh, I sound like a tourist, but all they would say at the end of the day is, Nihongo wa jose desu ne? or something like that, which is all fine and good, but that can only go so far, especially when you're trying to strike up a conversation with the Japanese, with the Japanese that you learned. And wow, then like I got myself Rosetta Stone and I was introduced to immersion and things like that through the software. And when I managed to get my hands on Rosetta Stone, on Rosetta Stone software, all I could say was that uh, it was a nice little experience, but at the same time, it was boring. Then I got myself some Japanese imported video games over time and Tales of Exilia, for example, I got really good at that game despite the fact it was in Japanese, a language that I was supposed to target in the first place, but I ended up relying heavily on textbooks more than I did the content that I've consumed over the years. And I'm just gonna be honest with you. This is just my personal opinion, but I really think that it's gonna be the biggest bitch slap you'll ever do to yourself just relying solely on textbooks. Now imagine if you go into Japan and you're trying to speak to somebody and even if you do get good with textbooks or even if you do get good with JLPT, one, where the hell is your confidence? Two, they're gonna look at you funny after a while because they're tired of babying you by constantly saying Nihongo Jose. They're gonna get tired of that and they're gonna think that either you can't read the fucking room or they're, they're gonna think that you're a kid or so, like you're still in your baby phase. And that was the thought process I had sometime before July 19th, 2019, when I thought to myself, something has to change. Then over time, I saw some stuff on YouTube about this guy who spoke Arabic through the use of immersion and comprehensive input. He didn't just rely on textbooks, this guy used everything at his disposal. I mean, yes, he did use textbooks, but he also studied through like watching television programs, movies, and consumed a lot of content in his target language, was, which was Arabic. And after so many years spending time with Arabic speakers, other people who learned and consuming so much of his target language content, he would go to Egypt and speak Arabic so much so that if you were to close your eyes, you would have thought he was either from the Middle East or he was born in Egypt. And and I saw that, and yes, that was my first video, by the way, to be honest, and it was so fucking cool. Like, this guy learned Arabic like it was nothing. This guy speaks it as if he was a resident or a citizen of an Arabian-speaking country. And then I saw Katsumoto, and he was talking about the concept of immersion and the very pitfalls that come with learning a target language or consuming a target language, and how to avoid it. Now, AJAT, or all Japanese all the time, and similar approaches to language acquisition. Like, it was really, really extreme. Though, at the time, I didn't really mind it. But then I realized that if you make any missteps with this course of action, you're bound to make a lot more mistakes than usual. But then again, making mistakes is par for the course. That means it's best to suck now than suck more later. Then, Matt vs. Japan came into my YouTube algorithm them and he had a much more streamlined and a little more simplistic approach to language acquisition. Then I met similar members of the community on YouTube such as Yoga, uh, Brit vs Japan, and countless others. Then I went all through the internet searching for tools and, and it's kind of fortunate that I have a cool kick-ass PC that I constructed two years prior time that I can store so many of my resources and I made damn good use of it ever since. Just just recently, I've gotten myself some access to almost every form of Japanese channel or cable network 
that I can watch. The only downside is it's streaming in real time, which means all the late night and early morning stuff I get to watch during the day, but all the good stuff happens when I'm asleep. So there's that going for me. But my thing is the whole act, the whole language acquisition journey did some damn good wonders for me. And I learned a lot more in the span of what is three years now than I ever did in roughly around 23 to 24 years. And that says a lot about the difference between language acquisition versus just solely language learning. Now, make no mistake, you still have to learn the language, but you'll benefit a much greater deal when you throw yourself into the wild that is a foreign language with minimal native language influence. Like, this is the language that you're trying to adopt. For me, it's Japanese, and I love this language so much. Like, ever since I made the decision to rely on language acquisition, I wrote a lot of Japanese stuff and plastered that mess all over my wall inside my room. I've constantly watched a lot of my favorite anime in Japanese with no subtitles in English. The only subtitles I did download were mostly Japanese, if not all Japanese. That way I would have a better grasp of the language. Not only that, but I also used the subtitles for sentence mining and review viewing a lot of vocabulary, grammar points, and things like that. It was it was so surreal. It was just freaking amazing. Like I didn't I didn't know where to start, but but I did. And that's the thing. Like I had a blast. And just recently I started making more Japanese speaking friends. And some of the people who've been speaking Japanese or learning the language like I have are now wondering about how I took this approach and are starting to follow in my footsteps. However they're doing this in different ways, but the underlying theme of it is the same. The underlying philosophy still remains the same across a lot of my peers and especially myself. While we handle acquisition different, at the end of the day, people acquire language in one way and that is comprehensible input. Like there's now a community, especially in this pandemic, that is following in the footsteps of these crashes and each individual is doing their own rendition of experimenting on crashes input hypothesis hypothesis and it is just a blast to see. Every time I go on YouTube, I actively look for Japanese videos on there. Some of it is from voice actors, others from like actual Japanese YouTubers. I would go on social media, especially Twitter, and look for Japanese tweets all across the place. Like, I don't even know where to start. Like, it has been such an amazing journey. Yes, it's hard, and some of the circumstances that I go through are less than ideal, but when I do get that downtime, when I do get that spare time, I make it a point to listen to a as much Japanese as I can. I make it a point to review as much Japanese as I can. And since I play video games and most of the games I buy have me like playing the game in my target language, I'm really taking advantage of the opportunities that are provided. Like a lot of the settings I have on my electronics, such as my phone, computer, and my games, all in Japanese. And I recommend people do that, not just with the language I'm talking about, but with any language, whether it's Spanish, whether it's Korean, whether it's Thai, whether it's French, like really give it a shot. Like don't just learn the language, acquire it, make it yours. Live your life as much as you can in your target language. Ooh. Okay, like this is a far more passionate video than usual, but I felt like this was something that needed to be said because I really wanted to celebrate three years of this amazing contrast, this, this brand new change that I have undergone and how it has helped me become a little more proficient in the language. Like I'm trying to make the JLPT a fucking joke. That's what I'm trying to do here. And I would like to be taken seriously by a lot of natives when I speak this language. And I wanna believe that I am making progress in that regard. Maybe a lot of what I'm saying sounds a little bit arrogant. Maybe what I'm saying is crazy. But even with some of the people who I've drawn inspiration from ever since I got started, I've to some extent carved my own path in this nice little journey of mine. But I don't think this is something that I can do alone for too long. And I'm glad that I am starting to get as much help as I can from other members of the community. Like, they're just whipping out tons of resources. I've made some cool and very interesting friends, especially during Momocon season. So there's that too. But what do you guys think of comprehensible input? Like, what do you guys think of language acquisition? Do you think it's something helpful or do you think it's just a terrible philosophy? Whatever opinion you have, just let me know in the comments. 
and who knows but before i leave i do have a series of recommendations like if you want to get started on this nice little journey here now i'm trying to say all this without making it sound like a cult or whatever but if you want to get started i suggest you make a habit of just listening to your target language without having to ask what they're saying or what does it mean or things like that if this is like your first time because if you're trying to do this for the sake of translating you're really gonna be in for a messy messy ride just flat out listen to it. If you're an anime fan, just watch anime in Japanese. You've got DVDs of your favorite anime that you've watched frequently. Like, take the subtitles off, set the dubbing to Japanese, and just listen to it. I mean, if you gotta take a break, then by all means do so. Like, some of you have jobs and careers and families to take care of, so... Or better yet, if you do have some families, like, if you do have a kid or two, like, get them into language learning, get them into language acquisition. Like, it's a fun little experience that I think kids especially will benefit from because their minds will process a lot of information in ways that adults can't. Even though some people argue that adults can do it better than children, but the point is, like, bring some people along for the ride. But with getting started, it will get very scary at times. Like, when I got started with this journey, it was really scary, but over time I got used to it. I got used to listening to Japanese unfiltered, unadulterated, untranslated. I've gotten so used to it in such a short amount of time that I found myself feeling a little more inspired. But as far as motivation goes, don't count on that. I mean, motivation will get you started, but it can only get you so far because the one thing that will really get you going is discipline. Like you really have to have that discipline to make listening to your target language a habit. And as you are learning, just listen to it, make it into white noise. Like if you have access to your native language, if you have access to your target language to some capacity on a computer or on a TV box, use it as white noise. Have that shit playing around as you're cooking, as you're raising your kids, as you're doing your remote job. That is if your remote job allows you to do that. Like really do that shit. Like devote at least 10 to 15 minutes or even an hour at max if you're feeling bold into learning as you're doing this. Then when you're done, keep on listening. If you're on the road, hook your car up to your phone and listen to a podcast or two. Listen to some target language content that you've recorded or have downloaded. Take whatever steps you can to acquire that language and make it your own. It's going to get difficult, you're going to feel like you're in a strange new world, but you will get used to it so much so that with all that studying and acquiring, when you go to your target country and you meet the locals there and you speak the language like it's nothing, yeah, you'll see the results pay off. You're still going to make a few mistakes here and there, but that's okay. Sometimes the little mistakes make you better in the future. But that's all I got to say. Thank you guys so much. Be sure to hit up my coffee or my Patreon. Support me any which way you can or you can hit up my socials. The links provided will be in the description below.